This is your 28storms.com cyclone update for Saturday, the 26th of November. If we first look toward Australia, we see that there is some convection just to the north of the top end, but nothing is overly organized and conditions do not appear to be favorable for tropical development. And the same can be said for the convection across the southern Pacific. In the meantime, we have a much more active setup in the northern Indian Ocean, where we have newly classified tropical cyclone 5A, located just to the west of Sri Lanka and very close to the southern tip of India. The good news is that the cyclone is moving away from those portions of the coastline at a fairly decent clip, so flooding is not going to be as significant as it otherwise could be, but the storm will still have to be monitored as it continues to progress deeper into the Arabian Sea. Beyond the next two to three days, the forecast track becomes a little bit more problematic. We have some models taking the system in a more northerly direction toward the lower half of Pakistan in northwest India, while some of the more reliable models, for example the ECMWF, is showing a much weaker storm moving closer toward the coast of Oman. The latest wind shear analysis from the University of Wisconsin shows a very favorable setup for strengthening at least over the next 24 to 36 hours. We see a very powerful upper level ridge dominating the mid to upper half of the atmosphere directly above the cyclone and all of the wind shear associated with the mid-latitude westerlies are located well toward the north and they are not going to have any impact on the storm over the next couple of days. The bigger question is whether or not the shear currently over the Arabian Sea will at least temporarily relax and if this favorable upper level ridge continues to follow the storm toward the northwest. If it does, we could be dealing with a stronger tropical cyclone, but if the shear does not abate, then the storm very well could begin to weaken as it approaches the northern coastlines in the Arabian Sea. The latest low level vorticity analysis shows a rather strong vorticity max located exactly where we would expect, just to the south of the southern tip of India. However, the vorticity max is slightly elongated from west to east, so it still can become a little bit better defined over the next couple of days. The main reasoning behind the Joint Typhoon Warning Center's upgrade of the system to a tropical cyclone was the latest data from the Windsat satellite imagery. As we can look very closely here, it does have a closed low-level surface circulation with maximum sustained winds in excess of 30 to 35 knots. On a much more regional scale, we can see on the latest enhanced satellite animation that the storm is taking full advantage of the favorable upper level ridge dominating much of the region. We really don't see much in the way of any restriction of the outflow channels. So this is a healthy indicator for this tropical cyclone. And the same pattern is evident on the latest water vapor animation. We can also make out the mid-latitude troughiness over much of the Arabian Sea extending into much of the Middle East. And the big question will be how much will that mid-level trough affect the intensity and the steering of the storm as it moves deeper into the Arabian Sea. The following is the 12Z run of the ECMWF forecast model, and as we advance the forecast into 24, 48, and 72 hours, it becomes evident that the ECMWF is not relaxing the vertical wind shear currently in place over the Arabian Sea. Therefore, upper level conditions are not forecast to become overly favorable for intensification, and as we go into 96 hours and 120 hours, so this is looking five days out, the storm begins to weaken due to the unfavorable wind shear, and a more weakened system would imply a more westerly track toward the coast of Oman. But, you know, we would settle for this track because even if it does move in that general direction, it is unlikely to impact the Arabian Peninsula as a classified tropical cyclone. However, a completely different scenario is being advertised by the 18Z run of the GFS model. Over the next 24 and 48 hours, the storm is forecast to continue to intensify. So the model here is showing a more favorable environment for intensification. And as we alluded to just a moment ago, a stronger system is going to be more likely to recurve out ahead of that mid to upper level trough currently over the Middle East. And so if that were to happen, as we can see, the model is indicating that the storm will move in a general direction toward lower Pakistan and northwest India. This would be a somewhat grave forecast track scenario, as this portion of the globe cannot handle tropical cyclone landfalls very well. And a couple of the other dynamical models, including the Canadian CMC and Navy no gaps, are in general agreement with this forecast track. However, the good news is that the GFS is the only model showing a landfall of this magnitude and intensity. 
And the other bit of good news is that, of course, the forecast is still five to six days in advance. So this is likely to change several times. And the ECMWF solution could also very easily verify. Elsewhere, much of the tropics remain quiet, although we are still monitoring the weak tropical disturbance located off the northeast tip of the coast of Madagascar. It's really not showing much in the way of any additional organization today, but it will still continue to be monitored as it does still have a slight chance of organizing into a minimal tropical cyclone as it drifts off toward the west-southwest in this general direction. So improving weather conditions are likely to be expected across Sri Lanka and southern India over the next 48 hours as the tropical cyclone continues to push deeper into the Arabian Sea. And over the next few days, we will just have to continue to monitor the storm's progress before we can make a final forecast as to where the storm is most likely to make a secondary landfall, unless, of course, it does fall apart over open waters. So thank you for watching today's video. We will have another video posted by tomorrow afternoon here at 28storms.com slash cyclone.